Thank you for checking out part one of my barrel tutorial. If you haven't seen part zero, which is just kind of the getting, you know, a little bit familiar with Blender, then I recommend going and checking that out. But if you are ready to go in this, we can just open up a new Blender file because we might as well keep the camera, the, the light and the cube in there. So the first thing that we're going to do, and this is very, very important. We're going to click on the default cube. We're going to delete it because that's what you're going to do every time. Even if you need the default cube, you're going to delete the cube, add it back in. It's a whole thing. It's not going to make sense when you first start, but it just seems to happen to everybody. So it's just kind of what happens with Blender. Once the cube is deleted, we are going to hit shift a create a plane. If you look in the top left corner, you can actually see the scale on the X, Y, and Z. We're just going to drag this up until it's about 10. It's no big deal. I'm also going to hit shift a, and I'm going to create a cylinder. So you don't have to change any of the features down here. Let's just keep it where it is. So let's hit G and Z move it up so that it is sitting on our plane. Now, one thing I didn't mention in part zero, but this little dot here is the origin point. So if you hit R and Z, it'll rotate around this point and it'll rotate as you can see like this, but I don't want it to be like that. I want it to be down here so that if I move the barrel, it's, you know, if I scale it up, it's going to be scaling where the bottom is always sitting on the floor. So what you can do is click on this cylinder, go up to object set origin origin to 3d cursor. So that little anchor I was talking about, that's the 3d cursor. We click it here and you can see that now that orange dot is right in the middle. You can also just right click the object and go to set origin. But now if we rotate it, now you can see how it's, it's changing. This is uh, every object has an origin point and you can do some, you know, you can actually change how the object is going to interact with your scene based on where it is. A good example is a door. If the door is spinning in the middle, it's going to look almost like a, like a revolving door. Whereas if it's on the hinge, it's going to open like a normal interior door. Now, if you created both of these objects inside of object mode, they should not be connected. You should be able to hit G and Z and move them. If you can't move them and they're connected individually, just go into edit mode, hit, make sure nothing's selected. Just hover over your cylinder, hit L, hit P, and then hit separate by selection. And then you should be able to hit tab or go into object mode here, and you'll be able to click them individually again. The first thing that we're going to do is we are going to hit S and Z and scale it up a little bit. So let's scale it up. Uh, let's say... Look up in the top left too, if you just want to be precise. Let's just say eh, about 1.4. That should be good enough. Now we're going to go into edit mode for this barrel. We are going to hit control R to do a loop cut and we're going to scale it up or we're going to scroll up once. So once that's done, cl left click, left click again. And now we have extra geometry. We need to make it shaped like a barrel. So once you get to this point, hit S and then just slowly drag it out. And we're going to go to about 1.2. This part is really not important. If you go to like 1.1, 1.3, nothing is really changing functionally. It's just that, you know, it, the barrel is going to be a little bit of a different shape. What we are going to do now is we're actually going to make the rings that go around the barrel. What we can do is hit control B to bevel. As we said, in the first part, it's, it's sometimes used on corners, but it can also just be used to split one line into multiple ones. So if we hit control B and we slowly drag it out, you can start to see the shape of these rings appearing. If we click it and be careful not to click off of it because it just is an extra step if you have to, if you click off of action, just hit control Z and go back. What we are going to do though, is we're going to hit shift D to create a duplicate of these rings. And we are just going to then hit Y or X doesn't matter. Just move it off to the side like so. Once they're over here, hit P to separate them. And then you can go up here, object mode. And now we have our rings separate from our barrel just to make things a little more 
clear as well. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to go barrel. So you can just double tap it up here or you can hit F2 right here just to rename it. I'm going to click on the rings, hit F2. I'll call this rings. The plane will rename this to floor. And now everything has a very clear name. You can just look right at the outliner and you can see exactly what they are. From here, we are now going to be creating the wooden planks of our barrel. Now, this part can be a little bit weird, but don't worry too much. Hit hold alt so you can see I'm holding it and left click and it will select everything up on this line. And then we are going to hold shift because we want to select more. And then we are going to alt hold alt again and left click. And we're just going to left click our way around. You can then orbit or use the middle mouse button. If you're holding the middle mouse button, by the way, and you are so if you're holding shift, and you also hold the middle mouse button, you'll pan, but that's not really that big of a deal. So let's shift alt, shift alt, left click, and we're just going to go around. I'm going to rotate with the mouse. If you let go of them, it's not going to, it's not going to get rid of your selection, but you do need to be holding them when you actually go to click on them. So let's now rotate around that barrel again. Okay, and now we are just going to put a little tiny bevel in these. So we're just going to control B, slowly drag it out. And you don't want to go too far because this is just going to be the gap in between. And so man, let's try something like that. Okay, so once we are here, this is a trick that I think is very, very helpful. Let's hit the slash button, which is the same as your question mark button. And we're going to isolate this barrel. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hit three to make sure I'm in face mode. I'm going to shift left click the top and I'm going to shift left click the bottom so that we have all of the uh, inner plank parts of our barrel and the top part selected. And this can save you a lot of time. So instead of selecting each of the planks, I'm just going to hit control I because it inverts the selection. And it's much easier than going through and clicking all of these. Sometimes if you have, you know, six faces that you have to select and one of them, and sorry, one of the faces you're not selecting, click on the one you're not going to select and invert the selection. And then you'll have all of them clicked. Sometimes you may seem like, oh, that's just too easy, but it will really come in handy. Once we have this, again, make sure you hit three to make sure you're in face mode. Extrude along normals. And we're just going to slowly drag this up. And you can start to see that the barrel is kind of taking shape. So let's go about here. You can do it as much as you want, but I think that that's looking pretty good already. So let's hit tab. Let's hit that question mark slash button again. And now, you know, our barrel is taking shape. But we have to get the rings back on it. So let's click on the rings, hit tab, hit A to select all. And then we're going to make sure that hit three again to make sure that we are in face mode or face select mode. Right click, extrude along normals. And then you want to pull it up so that it goes out. And I think that that should be about good there. Now let's just move this on top of our barrel and see if we have to scale it up a little bit. And I think that that's is not bad, but I do want to scale it out a little bit. But the problem is that when we do that, you can see that it's kind of moving off to the side because that orange dot is there. Let's right click on the barrel, set origin, origin to geometry. And it's not always perfect, but where, cause it kind of puts in the middle of the geometry. So if you have a weird shape, it might not go right in the middle, but for something like this, it'll definitely do the trick. So let's scroll in a little bit. Let's hit S and slowly drag it out and then I think that that's looking fairly good. It may not be perfect, but I think that that's going to do the trick. And from here, that's uh, that's the beginning of the barrel tutorial. We've done the modeling part that I want to do. So the next part is going to be looking at how we texture this barrel. And then the last part will be how we get it ready to render. And it's it's really not a very long tutorial. 
it's uh it's meant to be you know pretty easy to get through because i don't want people to get discouraged so if you found the video helpful i'd really appreciate it if you give the video a thumbs up and also subscribe to the luminous blender account this is going to be the first couple of videos that i post to the channel so it'd be great to see some new faces over there and also returning faces for now though i'm going to move on to part two i hope to see you all there